Hi guys, Clay from Australian Survivalism. Uh, just doing a three day hike out in southeast Queensland. Uh, we're about an hour into the hike now, and we've come up against a, quite a, a sheer face. So we've uh, gone around and we're in like a, a big valley, but I said to show you guys what, what we're carrying. Uh, you know, it's a three day hike, so quite large packs and uh, harness rigs but I'll just show you what we just scaled no ropes just using vines as our way up I don't know if you can if you can see that and how steep it is but yeah, there's a river down the bottom there <laughs> Anyway, the adventures, we'll keep moving. All right, nearly there. Hard work, but extremely fun. All right, guys, let's go. Final leg. Well, we found our camp spot. Pretty tough, huh? You reckon, bud? Pretty tough hike in, but well worth it. I love it, huh? All right, might go set up camp. Okay, doing a bit more hiking up this stream here um, I gotta say this is just this is absolutely awesome country we've uh, we stopped we've set up camp um, yeah we've we had some palm heart for lunch it's not much but I mean we haven't we haven't caught any yabbies yet so Pretty good though, I mean, uh, there's plenty to be had. Pretty tasty. So, I'm gonna keep moving up this stream here. And see what else I can find. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I can find some sandpaper figs. Uh, but we'll see how we go. Getting a bit peckish. So, hopefully, some yabbies. Yabbies for dinner. Alright, I'll keep moving. survival trip without refreshments. <laughs> it's bloody cold and it absolutely pissed down last night. But <clears throat> we've been gathering dry timber from uh, from trees you now that's hanging up we got some dry timber from underneath this log just before. That gave some shelter to the timber up underneath. We gathered that stuff. It's the only dry stuff really around. Um, we've got the fire going and it's drying out more timber now that we've got flame. So, yeah, 
going on a, a hike up this way today. So we'll get some breakfast into us and be on our merry way. Uh, generate some body heat to stay warm. <coughs> Breakfast done? Yep. Ooh. Might do up another palm heart for morning tea, I think. Still pretty cold. It's five past nine. But as you can see, the sun doesn't really get in this valley. I mean, it's up right up there in the treetops. But down here, in this... Oh, it's more of a gully, I suppose. It's not deep enough to be a valley, but not much sun until about 11 o'clock. And then at 1 o'clock, it gets back to this. Still. Happy days. Bushwalk time. Pretty thick going. It rained last night, so rocks are still wet. around there I think buddy I'm not going over there all right oh, I found a wild raspberry bush unfortunately no raspberries on it but come back in a few months keep moving and see what we can find yeah all right haven't found too many wild edibles on, on our little hike but got a fiddle head just there that one's a little bit too old yeah i wouldn't be bothering with that one but that fiddle head there uh he can boil it up or eat it raw either one but boiling it's always better and Oh, here's another one. Here's a fiddlehead. Better looking one. Um, but also, better than that, is wild ginger. I'm not going to rip this one out just to show you, but easily identified. You can wrap uh, you know, fish or uh, shrimp or anything that you catch up in these leaves. It'll give you a gingery sort of flavor but down in here like any other ginger it's the root good for you <coughs> you think there's nothing to eat there's always something to eat 
Uh -huh. Take a Nate out today to show him a couple of things. So, see if we can find some more. Oh yeah, keep moving. I mentioned before, I'd look for some sandpaper figs. It's the wrong time of year, really, but I mean, there it is. You hear that? Easily identified by the the sandpapery uh, leaves. But at the right time of year, you can get a bumper crop of sandpaper figs off these guys. Little purpley black figs that are not the tastiest figs in the world, but they are pretty yummy. I've demonstrated uh, how to find and which ones to eat on those before. I'm going to keep moving. If Nate doesn't fall in the water, I'm going to show you guys a video of just what to maybe look for if you're out in the bush and like, uh, you're hungry. Um, like this pond, it's all nice and settled, right? It's got scum on the bottom. I mean, the water's really, really fresh and clear. But then you come to a certain spot and something looks out of place. Anyone pick it? All right, all the rocks on the bottom, and you know you got berries and leaves and stuff over here, and you know, rotting matter everywhere, except for here. That's because under that rock, right there, I guess it's a pretty darn big yabby, judging by the by the uh, size of the hole underneath that giant boulder. He's picked a good home. To dig out because if that boulder was any smaller I'd be lifting it up and grabbing the abbey but I think this is where we need to put our traps there's a good size yabby in there but we'll see how we go but that's what to look for all your leaf matter on the bottom you know it's all settled down it's all rotting away and you come to a nice clean spot with a pile of rocks or a pile of sand right next to a hole yabby Yabby signs. Potential food anyway. See how we go. Alright. Alright guys. 99.9% um, .9 of survivalists will tell you, you know, I mean, it's always sensible to, to boil your water before you drink it because you're not sure of, of the source and where it's been. But if you come to a place like this and you know, you've got a dry, it's a dry uh, riverbed uh, as far as you can walk up that way. So the creek's actually, it's gone underground and it's being filtered straight. It's, it's coming straight out of the mountain right here. I don't know if you can hear that. But... Straight out of the side of the mountain, spring water. And that water is better than anything that you'll get from a water filter, you know, a, uh, <laughs> a bottle of water from the servo. That's how water is supposed to be. It's got all your minerals in it. It's another little spring on that side. And that's coming out of the mountain. So I'm going to fill up my water bottle and keep moving. 
So, we're walking up this creek bed. The spring, the creek has uh, come back out of the, uh, onto the surface. I've walked a little bit further, it disappears just there. It comes back out to the surface here and we're walking along and my young fella said, hey dad, check this out. Bird, bird nest right there. Right there. Sounds like an owl. I think he's right inside there. So if I was starving, I'd be trying to climb that tree and if the owl was still in there he'd be going over my fire tonight and if his eggs were there then sorry little birdies but I'd rather live but anyway just uh, showing you guys what you can see if you keep your eyes peeled and if you you know have a good look there's survival food to be had Just about everywhere. There's a palm. I mean, struck the palm hard out of that. I've got a, got a little blade on me today. Got my Elk Ridge 107. I mean, here to do the trick. So. Gotta love this stuff. Not bad, eh, mate? Yeah. Quite tranquil. Uh, <sighs> What's up, buddy? Take a photo of this. I'm videoing you. Now this is this is all private property this in the hinterland of the Gold Coast. So we know the landowner and he's got over a thousand acres of this beautiful stuff. So we have permission to be here and demonstrate to you guys well, it's not real hard to not real hard to live in an environment like this when you've got you know drinkable fresh water that's coming straight out of a mountain and an abundance of plants if you I mean provided you know what you're looking for, what you can and you can't, 
I mean, there's enough palms here to keep me going indefinitely. And yabbies to boot. Not that I've caught any yet. <laughs> but, uh, well, not on this trip anyway. But um, you certainly wouldn't go hungry. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't die of starvation or thirst, put it that way. Or, uh, you know, you wouldn't get any sort of stomach bug from drinking terrible water. There's, hey Nate, can you, uh, I might demonstrate a palm heart here. There's a broken palm. It's going to die anyway. Show these guys palm hearts. Just one second. There's the broken palm. I'll just have a look to see if it's a part's going to be. Yeah, it's, it's only it's only recent, so I think that's one that we could demonstrate. Yeah, all right. Alrighty. Trusty blade. Basically, all you want to do is take off the outer skin and get to the fleshy inside of the palm and the heart, you can't miss it, it's unmistakable. You'll see it and you get inside and I've done this a lot of times, so probably should have gloves on. I'll be using a rock to, to do it, but it's basically you're just skinning the outside of the palm. Get to the nice fleshy inner part. Tastes sort of like artichokes. And chocolate's full of carbohydrates. Eat it like a carrot. Eat it like a carrot. And you've got plenty of food. Um, you know, with a little bit of knowledge, I can survive. All right, let's keep moving. So, something's had a good old feed of bird here. Might be, well, it could be a cat, but and this deep into the jungle, uh, you know, it, I'm pretty sure there's still quolls around here. Quals. I've been uh, having a good old feed anyway. I've been chased by a dinosaur, this would be a good place to hide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I dare say that tree would have seen the dinosaurs, man, pretty close to it. That's a bloody old tree.
some real food. That's a good sized fiddlehead. And he's got two little brothers down there below him. Oi. One here, another one here. Um, obviously, you, know, you get all the all the fur off them. You can eat them raw, but they're much better, much better boiled. They're really slimy. But uh, if you've got any sort of, you know, parasites living inside you, like worms eat a few of those and they'll get rid of them don't eat too many though because uh, ferns do contain a poison that um, you know it's a, as a protection to stop animals from eating them however the fiddleheads only contain minute amounts and won't hurt you if you eat a few of them to get yourself out of a you know a terrible situation if you're in a survival situation that's some food that you can eat not something that you would eat every day as a staple you know food source but you can eat it so there's another one that's a uh, tree fern fiddlehead uh, much better than the tiny little fiddleheads i showed you before but still 